Hello, everybody. This is Pamela. And this is Tracy. And we are here to discuss how business really works. Today's topic is going to cover what we call the laptop lifestyle. What does that mean? What does it mean for you if you're trying to grow your own business and be location independent? There is a lot to this that I think people really need to know that maybe they don't consider when they're going after this dream of location independence and working on the beach on their laptop. There's more to it than just chasing that dream. So what's involved? And the reason we're going to discuss this today is because Tracy and I have both noticed that there is an explosion of publicity around this idea of living a laptop lifestyle. I see articles about this everywhere. It's an entrepreneur magazine in Wall Street Journal. It has hit mainstream media. And actually, this is not a new idea. It's been around for a while. Years ago, I heard about a book called Escape from Cubicle Nation, which is very much about living this kind of lifestyle. And that is not a new book. And you can go Google and just see listing after listing of books and articles and blogs about living a laptop lifestyle. In fact, that is the title of one of the books, (laughs) Living a Laptop Lifestyle. What do you think, Tracy? Is this an actual business model? Is it something that people can attain? What do they need to know if they want to chase this kind of dream? Oh, it's most definitely possible because I've done it. I mean, I'm completely location independent, as you know. I can run my businesses from anywhere. Mm -hmm. But I think the big problem with the way it's being sold right now is you've got people out there selling courses, writing all these articles, and they're really not talking about building a business. They're talking about being self-employed, being a freelancer, basically selling your skills through Guru or Upworks or something of that nature. And even even if you build your own client base, if all you're doing is selling your skills and you're not actually building a business, there's there's a big difference there. I mean, did you understand where I just said a business? Mm -hmm. A business, noun, object, thing. A business is something that can be transferred. So when you're thinking about building a business, you have to think beyond just your skill set. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with being self-employed. The vast majority of the people in this country are self-employed. I think the vast majority of the people in the world are self-employed. You just kind of have to understand the business model. The business model that is being sold so heavily right now is about you obtaining a skill set and you selling that skill either by the hour, by the project, something of that nature, and it's all focused around you. The negative to being self-employed versus owning a business, the number one negative is the fact that if something happens and you can't work, your income dries up. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you build a business, there are systems and processes in place. There are other people doing work. There are software doing work. Things are automated. That income continues to generate even if you're not directly working. So when you're thinking about building a laptop lifestyle, you need to think more about building a business, or at least that's my personal opinion. Yeah. I don't want to be in a position to where, you know, I'm hiking Kilimanjaro and I break a leg or get knocked unconscious and I'm out of commission for a week that all of a sudden there's no income. I think if you got knocked unconscious, you would be looking at more than a week, but... (laughs) (laughs) You you never know. I'm a a quick healer. Um, (laughs) Up on Kilimanjaro, you're not. (laughs) That's so funny. So it's kind of like you can actually hit two business models if you want to build a business and be location independent. One is to build what a lot of people refer to as a passive income business. You'll hear Pat Flynn talk about this a lot. And this is about having assets that you can sell over and over again. Mm -hmm. So courses, books, things of that nature. And that the sale happens through a sales funnel is totally automated. And you're going to continue to get revenue even if you go backpacking in Patagonia for a month and are completely off the grid. Income's still going to come in. So let me just clarify for a moment. The way we are defining a business or the way you're defining it and you would like our listeners to think about it is that 
it's not just dependent on them. Their income is not just dependent upon the hours that they can put in personally. So Mm -hmm. it involves more people, but it also involves some systems where if they are not involved on vacation, the business is still bringing in income. So it's it's bigger than you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, the other model is to build a traditional business, but build it completely remotely. I mean, there's a lot of companies that do this, and obviously most of them are in the tech industry because we just naturally lend ourselves toward this. Mm -hmm. You've got companies like, you know, Automatic, that everyone is remote. There is no centralized office where people gather and work. Mm -hmm. Everyone functions from wherever they want to function from, be that an office in their home, be that a co-working space, or be that, you know, a hammock on the deck overlooking the beach. (laughs) If you can work there, you're, they're more than happy for you to do so. But there's some skills that come with building that kind of business. And there's problems that come with even being location independent that never seem to get addressed in these courses and articles and stuff that we're constantly seeing. Every time I read one, I'm like, but you forgot to mention. But I like to argue with these articles. (laughs) And (laughs) the biggest one being... You don't just need to know how to program. You need leadership skills. You yes. don't just need to know how to write great copy. You have to have leadership skills. Leadership skills. You have to be able to choose people who are self-motivated, that don't need constant guidance, that don't need to be micromanaged. Mm-hmm. You need to know how to set expectations and hold people accountable to those expectations. If you really want to become a true business owner and be location independent, learning leadership is the most important thing you can do. It's the number one skill. I agree. And I would add also, you need to be the type of person that is accountable to yourself and also to your team. So not only do you need to hire these folks who can work independently, but you need to make sure that you have what it takes to do your own work. And I think most people who are, what they don't realize is the amount of work that may be involved when they get into it, a beach vacation all the time. You still have to put in the work, even if you're on the beach and you have that work to put in your time. Totally. I mean, that's one of the first things that I had difficulty with especially when we were on the road traveling a lot, was this, yes, you have to put in X number of hours if you want Mm -hmm. to see forward progress. You know, even when you have a passive income style business where you've created courses and that sort of thing, they still have to be marketed. It's not that you just create it and boom, you're on autopilot. Yes, you could probably take a month off or you could have a team that handles the marketing. But if you do have that team, you have to know how to lead that team. So there is no such thing as a truly 100% passive income business. I think probably the closest would be an author who has a publishing company who does all the marketing and all the work. All they have to do is write the book. But that's not realistic, but for just a minute fraction of the population. Yeah. I think a more accurate way to look at passive income and a passive income business is you work now, you reap the benefits later. Mm -hmm. That's really how it is. It's not that you put in a little bit of work now and you start seeing this passive stream of income right away. You need to put in a lot of work Mm -hmm. and then you start reaping the benefits later. And then, you know, if you want to step back a little bit later, then you can as long as you have your systems in place like Tracy does. But it's... I mean, yes, passive income is accurate, but at what point do you get to that passive income? There's a lot of work that comes before you can get to that point. Well, I have found in most cases is that it takes different people different amounts of time, depending on the amount of time they have to put in it. But, you know, most new businesses, if you're working at them close to full time, it can take 18 months to two years to even start pulling in passive income. But it's very scalable. And once you do... That's when you start to see. Yeah. So I think that's why people tend to go after it a lot is it's extremely scalable, which is the reward at the end of the rainbow. But you've got to get, again, get to that point 
first. And I'm going to add one more thing. I, I don't know, Tracy, if you have additional skills you want to add, but I just want to mention one more thing. And that is that you have to be the type of person who actually takes care of themselves. We are recording this show right now on a Sunday. I'm working on a Sunday and I don't mind because this is what I love to do. And I will give myself a break later. But the the type of demands that are put on you to build something is over and above what you're going to find in an eight to five Monday through Friday. You know, I don't clock out at five on Friday and it's all done for the weekend. No, I'm continuing to build. It's your choice. It's my choice how much work I want to put in. But if I wasn't healthy and if I wasn't eating right and if I wasn't getting enough sleep, which I do struggle with, but I've actually come to a point where it's much better than it used to be. You know, if I weren't physically able to meet the demands of this lifestyle, I couldn't sustain it for very long. So that's just my little addition to um, to our advice for you today. <laughs> it's true. And I'll be honest with you, when you're on the road and you're doing a lot of traveling, it's hard to stay healthy. You have yes. to really work at it and make it a concentrated effort. Yeah. And it's also really hard, you know, you'll have your travel days where you're dealing with airlines and different things like that. And you quite literally just cannot get any work done. Yeah. And then what are you going to do? You're going to sit in your condo or you're going to sit in your hotel room and you're going to work when there's this gorgeous tropical beach, you know, a hundred yards away Mm -hmm. or there's things you want to tour and see and experience. And you'll find that most people who are successful, highly successful at being nomadic and having the lifetime lifestyle, they have a tendency to settle somewhere for extended period of time. They're not just constantly going, going, going different place every week. Most of them are going to spend a month or two or three somewhere, and then they're going to go somewhere else. Correct. Um, Yeah. Because you need enough time to work and to enjoy the area you're in. That's right. That's a good point. Some of the skills that become very important to Having a totally 100%, I call it a remote business, laptop lifestyle just to me is, I don't know, too Mm frou-frou. But most of them fall under leadership. One, you have to learn to communicate well with people and ask them the right questions to make sure you're hiring the right people. The second is you have to let go of the details. You have to have the personality that doesn't get mired in the details. It's kind of like when I give someone an assignment, a job to do, is I don't tell them how to do it. Mm-hmm. I tell them what the expected outcome is. Mm-hmm. And then I give them the autonomy to figure out how to get there. People who want to work remotely as self-employed individuals, which is actually the majority of the people that I hire, they want to do things their way. They have that independence about them. And I can't be arrogant enough to believe that I know the exact best way to accomplish this outcome. Yeah, I have to give those people autonomy. or They're not going to enjoy working for me, and I'm not going to enjoy the process because micromanaging someone remotely is a lot of work. (laughs) I think micromanaging somebody in person is a lot of work, but add to that the remote factor. And that's exactly what I could not stand about corporate is I would have some bosses that were fantastic. They would tell me, you know, what needs to be done, what outcome they wanted, and then they would back away and let me do it. But just as many times, if not more often, I would have the micromanager, he he or she, I shouldn't say just he, because this has happened with both sexes. They wanted it, you know, done their way to the letter to the point where it, just every little action I was taking was being dictated. And I don't work that way. I just do not work that way well. It builds resentment. I feel like they don't trust me. I know it's not my issue in the end. It is theirs, but but still, I have to work under these conditions and I could not take. (laughs) That's one of the reasons I wanted to get out of corporate. What Tracy described a minute ago about people working independently have an idea of how they want to do it themselves and you have to trust them to do it that way. You know, that's how I am. Mm -hmm. So I totally relate to that. Well, and everyone has different skill strengths. I might have a really good way of doing this, 
But my way, the way my brain works, my very analytical brain, is not going to work for someone else. Else, they have to have their way of doing it. Mm-hmm. The only thing that matters is that the outcome is what the outcome needs to be, or better. I mean, there's been many times I have handed off a project and said, "Here's the expected outcome," and they bring back something even better because I gave them the autonomy to do so. The other thing is communication, communication, communication. One of the strongest traits of a leader. And the reason communication becomes so important is, one, you have to be able to accurately articulate those expectations. You have to be able to talk about the company culture without it being like you're preaching at people. This is our company culture, blah, blah, blah. You know, like you get in your corporate rah-rah sessions. Mm -hmm. Instead, you have to instill that corporate culture. Well, not even corporate culture. Your organization's culture in people without it being like a, a demand. Yeah. You, they, you have to create it in a way that they buy in on their own. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you're never going to have control of your remote, in most cases, contractors. There's not that many people who have remote employees. But if you get really big, you will. And I think you have to have a lot of emotional self-control. I think you have to have a lot of emotional self-control to be a leader, period. Yes. But when you're dealing with a remote team, you can't be getting upset every time something doesn't go exactly the way you want it to go. Yeah. You have to just let the process unfold. And you have to have the emotional maturity to not need that control. I agree. Emotional intelligence and maturity. Yes. Mm-hmm. I just call it emotional self-control. Um, I wish I knew where I heard this. I wish I knew where I read it and who to give credit to. But I have read so widely over the years that I don't know where it came from. But many, many years ago, I read that having your self-control of your emotions. In other words, horrible things are going to happen to everybody You're going to get angry. You're going to get upset. These things are going to happen. But you have the ability to go, all right, I'm angry. But I get to control how I respond, not my anger. And it's having that self-control of going, wow, I'm angry. Now, let's not let the anger control this. Let's think of what is the best solution, the most logical thing to do. That sort of thing is having that self-control. And for some reason, that really just impacted me. And I started paying close attention to that. And every time something would happen, which inevitably it seems like something happens all the time, Mm -hmm. I would start doing that. And I noticed that the more I did it and the more I controlled my emotions and my gut reaction, the less the problems started happening. Mm Mm-hmm. There was no confrontation. There was no problem. And the question is, did the that becomes the question of perception. Were the problems actually less? Or was it that I quit reacting in a negative way? It doesn't matter which was actually true. What mattered was my life improved dramatically. I like it. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess, you know, to... Drill down to the nitty gritty of our opinion on this laptop lifestyle is go for it. Absolutely go for it is a great way to to live. I agree. But understand that when you're reading these articles and you're buying someone's course on how to do this, make sure you know whether or not they're teaching you to be self-employed or they're teaching you to operate a business remotely. Mm -hmm. It's two entirely different things. Go for the one that is what you want out of life, but understand the difference. And make sure to keep in mind the skills that we've already mentioned, the communication skills, the emotional skills, the taking care of yourself skills, all of those things. And I would even add marketing. You've got to be able to market your business. These these are harder skills, like not harder, more difficult, but more technical skills that you'll need to have as well. 
keep those in mind when you're thinking about living this kind of lifestyle as well. Do you have those skills? If you are weak in any of those areas, what can you do to build those up and, you know, take a course like Tracy mentioned, but evaluate what it's teaching you to do the kind of business it's teaching you to form before you actually pay your money for it. Yeah. And also realize that if you have really strong leadership skills and you have a good cursory knowledge of anything technical, you can always hire the technical help. Mm -hmm. So you can really run any kind of business you want to with the right leadership skills and the right general knowledge of a subject matter. But if you want to be self-employed, you better be damn good at those technical skills. Yeah. All right. Well, our question for you today is, are you considering a laptop lifestyle? Do you want to escape the nine to five and be location independent? And if you are, which direction are you going? Are you going down the road of self-employment or are you trying to build a business, something that operates independently of you and is an asset that is transferable? So head on over to howbusinessreallyworks.com and answer those questions in the comments to this episode. Or if you'd like to have a private conversation with Pam and I, click the link to the contact page and send us a message. We would love to hear from you. Yes, and don't forget to like this episode. Please share this episode. And if you are listening in iTunes, please, would you give us a review? It would be very helpful for us. We'd be grateful to hear what you think to um, see a rating from you if you think we're worth a lot of stars that would be awesome (laughs) and that will help us be found in itunes which will help us to help more people like you build their business a true business from anywhere in the world and keep growing for us and for you so thank you for listening please like and share comment and we will see you next time